had angered the president of a client company and was demoted. The son of the client company's president came to visit at the new location of my transfer. When the business meeting ended smoothly and all the branch employees went to see him off. He saw one of the plump female employees among them and laughed loudly. So big. I thought she was pregnant. No. She's definitely bigger than a pregnant woman. Right? The female employee turned bright red in an instant. Her shocking insult made me lose my temper. And finally. My name is Maddie Paul. I am slightly over 30 years old. I haven't told many people, but I grew up in a single-parent household. Seeing my struggling mother, I wanted to support her even a little, so I decided to work instead of going to university. Fortunately, I got a job at a company that accepted high school graduates like me. I was grateful to the company and, of course, for my mother's sake, I devoted myself to work. Perhaps because of that, I was recently promoted to section chief. It is busy, but this company allows proper time off. So I went to my kickboxing gym on weekends, worked out, stayed healthy, and made sure I could support my mother in the best condition no matter what happened. It would be nice to say that everything was going smoothly, but I had a headache too. That was the president of the client company, Mr. John. Naturally, I had dealt with various people before. Some were difficult to handle. But I always tried to respond sincerely. Always remembering that I was working on behalf of the company. Even I was worn down by Mr. John. Mr. John's company was a major client, and I couldn't handle it carelessly. However, sometimes I felt like I wanted to hit him with a file when he was in front of me. Hey, get those ten cases by this afternoon. I'm sorry. Ordering that amount now and delivering it by this afternoon is a bit. Are you saying it's impossible? I'm asking you directly. Well, if you can't handle it, I'll just ask someone else. Probably... Someone else would say it's impossible too. Even though I thought so internally, I somehow managed to lower my head while holding the phone, flattered the president, made him feel good, and succeeded in extending the deadline to the next day. Such things were just the beginning. At one time, Mr. John suddenly canceled an order he had made with his own mouth the day before. I don't remember ordering such things cancel all of it, and said, Hey, what's up with the mid-year gift this year? It's just dry cookies. What cheap stuff did you use? Send something better. The new female employee you brought the other day, she's pretty good. Have her be in charge of our account from now on. Hey, I told you to change to a woman, didn't I? Why is that hot-blooded man here? Can I work seeing that face in this scorching hot season? He was getting more personal. At this rate, it was beyond the scope of work. I thought I should curb Mr. John's behavior early on. So one day, I firmly refused Mr. John's unreasonable request. I'm sorry. It's impossible. Impossible? Do you think it's okay to lose our business with us? It's impossible if it's impossible. If you think about it normally, you should understand that it's realistically impossible. I calmly let Mr. John's furious anger on the other end of the phone pass. I thought that allowing Mr. John to continue his wayward behavior would not be good for the company. Unfortunately, the higher-ups in our company didn't seem to think so. The next day, I was called in by my superior. You're being transferred, Maddie. Transferred? Mr. John is furious. That company is a major client for us. Do you know how much damage it would be if we lost the business? Such a thing. 
I bit my lip. However, there was no way to overturn the higher-up's decision. Looking at the destination, it was a blatant demotion. I lower my shoulders and receive the transfer order. The new location was far from home, and I was worried about my mother. Of course, I made sure my mother wouldn't know it was a demotion, so she probably thought it was just a change of workplace. Remember your initial enthusiasm at the new place and do your best. Recalling my mother's smiling face as she sent me off, I was feeling gloomy when. Here you go. This is for you, Maddie. A very gentle and kind voice was directed at me. When I came to my senses, the female employee had somehow appeared beside me. She casually placed freshly brewed coffee on my desk. And the female employee smiled brightly. Maddie, it must be quite stressful since you just arrived. It's said that working with some breaks can increase efficiency. So, I think it's okay to take short breaks. Oh, Diana. Is that a recommendation to slack off? Is it okay? Oh. Luke, you even had a discussion about this topic with me the other day. You're being so mean. Ha ha. Since Diana is so nice to Maddie, I got a little jealous. The male employee's loud laughter filled the office with laughter. In the center of it, Diana, the female employee called by name, turned a little red butt, noticing my gaze, gave a gentle smile. Maddie, everyone here can be a bit mean, but they are good people. Please rest assured. Diana is the employee in charge of general affairs in this branch. Although general affairs seem omnipotent, in this small office, it is confused with being a janitor. Even though she has proper administrative tasks as part of general affairs, she is asked to do miscellaneous tasks by other employees. But Diana handles it without a single unhappy expression. Her smile is the flower of this office. In this unfamiliar place, I was saved many times by her smile and thoughtfulness. One day, the female employees were gathered and excited about something. Hey, are you definitely wearing a dress? I'm going with ultramarine. I'll wear ultramarine. I'm going with pink. Wow, being so bold at that age. I'm thinking of white and yellow. What about Diana? Well, I... It seemed to be about the night festival that was supposed to take place in the park tonight. Diana, who is liked by the female employees, always participates in female talks, but she seemed unusually down today. When asked, she looked down for some reason. I'm okay. Diana, are you not coming again this year? It's fine, really. Don't worry about it. That's right. We'll pick out something that suits you properly. Thank you, everyone. But... Diana smiled modestly. After all, you see. I'm overweight. I couldn't lose weight this year either. She playfully said it was a punishment. Yes. Diana is quite plump. Moreover, the problem is that this office happens to have many slim people, making her stand out even more. I became concerned about Diana. It's a well-known fact that Diana is very conscious of her body shape, and although she is usually bright and positive, she seems strangely embarrassed about that topic, which always bothered me. It seems Diana didn't participate in the night festival. A few days later, seeing Diana not touching the snacks brought in by someone, I said, Diana, while your intentions are commendable, don't overdo it and endure too much. Thank you. But I really can't lose weight. 
Her sad voice tightened my chest. I spoke in an angry tone without thinking. That's not because Diana isn't trying enough. Maddie. I understand from going to the gym. People's bodies are determined by their constitution, whether they gain weight easily or not. Many kickboxers struggle with this. Oh. No. Noticing midway, I hastily cleared my throat. It's rude to talk about such things to a woman. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Diana chuckled softly. I'm happy. Thank you, Maddie. She finally smiled. I felt happy. It goes without saying now, but I think I was already drawn to Diana. However, Diana is strictly an employee of this branch. Worrying about my mother and wanting to return to the head office made things complicated for me. By the way, there is no kickboxing gym around this branch. I had to practice on my own, but it felt unsatisfactory. But still, Seeing Diana's smile made me feel that things will work out somehow, and it was strangely reassuring. So, I began to think that the demotion wasn't so bad after all. Eventually, when I started working harder than when I was at the head office. Mr. John's son is coming. He's coming here? Yes. It seems he's going to set up a branch here as well. We will be handling that transaction. Yes. It seems they plan to open a branch here too, and our office will handle the transaction. I see. Maddie, I know why you were transferred from the main office to here. Don't worry. I'll make sure you're not assigned to this task. Oh, no, I'm sorry for the trouble. I apologize and bowed deeply to the branch manager. I never imagined I'd have to meet Mr. John's son now. Though it was mainly the father, Mr. John, who caused me trouble, people often said, like father, like son. His son was the epitome of an incompetent successor, and as far as I knew, he showed no interest in work. He supposedly held a position, but all I ever heard were rumors of him fooling around. Still, I had dealt with him a few times when he accompanied his father. I liked this branch. So, I couldn't help but worry, and I gave some advice to the person in charge ahead of time. Perhaps it paid off. Ah, I only came to this backwater because my dad told me to, but it's not such a bad place after all. I'll tell my dad and the branch manager. By the end of the meeting, Mr. John's son was in a good mood. The person in charge relaxed and reported back to me that their business meeting had been a waste of time. They didn't discuss anything substantial, but at least he wasn't upset. In any case, his son probably wouldn't come back here, and someone else would likely take over the actual work. For now, we passed the first hurdle without any issues. When Mr. John's son was leaving by car, the branch manager ordered everyone to come outside and see him off. Given the size of this branch, he was a significant client, so the branch manager was probably on edge too. Naturally, the female staff also came out. Among them was Diana. What kind of cruel twist of fate made Mr. John's son walk right past Diana? He noticed her and suddenly started laughing. Wow. I thought you were pregnant. No. You're definitely bigger than any pregnant woman. Diana's face turned beet red in an instant. Mr. John's son, with his hands shoved in his pockets, leaned over to peer at Diana from both sides. Ha. They must have great pastures in this backwater. Ha ha. Thanks for the sight. How dare you say something so rude. Unable to contain myself, I stepped in front of Mr. John's son, 
shielding Diana and glaring at him. Apologize to her immediately. You've lost all sense of decency. What the hell? You punk. Do you know who I am? No matter how important you are, you have no right to insult her. Mr. John's son, who probably didn't even remember my face, flew into a rage and raised his fist at me. But I wasn't afraid of an amateur's punch. I quickly dodged, pushing Diana and the nearby staff away from him. Perhaps due to his lack of exercise, Mr. John's son lost his balance and fell face first onto the ground. A moment of silence passed. Are you alright? A man who appeared to be Mr. John's son's subordinate rushed over to help him up. Covered in dirt, Mr. John's son was shoved into his car, shouting angrily the whole time. Remember this. I'll have you fired. Whether he remembered me or not didn't matter. We silently watched as Mr. John's son's car drove away. Maddie From behind me, I heard Diana's faint voice. When I turned around, I saw Diana, her cheek slightly flushed, gently tugging on my sleeve. Thank you. I felt my face grow hot all at once. We couldn't look each other in the eye, both of us glancing away and fidgeting. The branch manager and others who saw this made it the talk of the branch for a while. It was quite embarrassing for me. But of course, this wasn't the time to be embarrassed. A few days later, I was summoned by the president to the main office. Ah, that son must have tattled to his father. Well, the John family never forgets things like this. Being called to the president's office. It was too big of a deal. This time, I'd surely be fired. I felt my shoulders droop, but I had no regrets about what I'd done. I protected Diana. I didn't involve the other employees. If this meant getting fired, so be it. Even if I had to change jobs, I would still work hard for my mother. But the moment I entered the president's office, I was shocked. Tense with nerves, I stepped inside. There was the president, and standing next to him was Diana, her hands modestly folded in front of her. I was dumbfounded as the president approached me. His walk was as impressive as ever, commanding attention. Yet, as soon as he reached me, he bowed deeply. Thank you, Maddie. You saved my daughter. Your daughter? I couldn't help but look at Diana. She smiled shyly. Diana was the president's daughter. However, she didn't like being treated specially as the daughter of the company's president, so she chose to work as a regular employee at the branch to learn about the business from the ground up. And, well... I was also embarrassed to be at the main office because I didn't want to be a disgrace to my father. What nonsense, Diana. I've told you countless times that you're my pride, never a disgrace. As I watched this overwhelming display of fatherly affection, I realized that Diana had avoided the main office because she was self-conscious about her appearance. Then, the president firmly grasped my hand and began to speak. The John family had lodged a furious complaint. But at the same time, Diana had told him what had happened. The president, finding it suspicious, investigated everything. And finally, he learned the truth. Maddie, I also looked into your transfer to the branch. It seems I owe you an apology for that too. When I was demoted, the president had been overseas on business. Someone else in the company had made the decision to transfer me, and it turned out that this person was in cahoots with Mr. John. No matter how many times I tried to report issues with Mr. John, my complaints were buried before they could reach the president. 
I thoroughly investigated the John family. I thoroughly investigated the John family situation. It seems you've had quite a hard time. The whole department said you were fighting alone. Oh. No. We've decided to terminate all dealings with that company. So you can rest easy now. Eh? My voice must have shown my worry. The president laughed warmly. That company was indeed a big client, but we're not running a business so weak that losing them would be a disaster. We've been increasing our transactions with overseas partners and not slacking off in our business efforts. I felt a deep sense of relief. However, it's true that things will be tough for a while. So, what do you say, Maddie? You're originally from the main office, so why not come back and help out? Hey, is that all right? Of course. Diana, you should take this opportunity to come to the main office as well. Ah, uh, well. Diana glanced at me briefly, her cheeks flushed. Then she straightened up and said, Yes. I can't let Maddie handle all the challenges at the main office alone. If there's anything I can do, please let me help. Diana. Even if you honestly say you want to be with Maddie, I won't be angry. Father. Diana turned bright red and started hitting her father's back, but I was probably blushing even more intensely. Though I was reluctant to leave the branch, which had great people, I would be able to reassure my mother by returning to the main office. My salary would increase, and I could go to the gym. Most importantly, Diana would be working at the main office with me. Even if we weren't in the same department, the arrangement was more than enough for me. Meanwhile, John's company, cut off by us, faced rejection from various other places as well. As a result, their company has been on a steady decline. Even Mr. John's son, who had been fooling around, reportedly got banned from various places. He likely no longer had the luxury to play around as he once did. Recently, I had even more to be happy about. Maddie, I've decided to send Diana to your department. Teach her the ropes thoroughly. Yes. Leave it to me. Thank you. Diana bowed solemnly. As she was technically my junior in the company, she often took a formal attitude around me. But that wasn't enough for me. After the president left, I mustered the courage to ask Diana. I got movie tickets. Would you like to go together? Diana blushed a little. Yes. I'll do my best to wear my new dress. You'll definitely look great, so don't worry. Stop it. You haven't even seen it yet. Still, Diana smiled happily. Her smile was what rescued me from the hardship of my demotion. Now it was my turn to protect her from the difficulties of working at the main office. Next time, I want to see you doing kickboxing. Sure. If you stop using honorifics with me. We chatted like that, smiling at each other. As for what happened next, I'll leave that to your imagination. How did you like this story? Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.